Hello, I'm Tim Kilduff and this is Business Matters. Business Matters uh, focuses not only on businesses operating in Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage those businesses. Today we're going to have a conversation with Mike Lucier, who's the President and CEO of Webster First Federal, a company that just opened up a brand new facility here in Hopkinton. Thanks very much for coming on the show today. One of the things that we're interested in exploring uh, on Business Matters is how people, uh, how they get focused and how they got directed to the work they're doing, and really to, to, to explore uh, your passion about, about your work. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if we could start with a little bit of your, uh, your background. Sure, I'll make it brief. Um, I went to school, I went to uh, Bentley College. Um, we studied accounting and finance uh, with a concentration in law. And then when I came out of school, I got my first job over at Spencer Savings Bank, um, which after four years, I, I was the treasurer there. And then I was um, given an opportunity to serve at Webster First. Uh, actually, it was Webster Credit Union back then. It's Webster First now. Um, but it was Webster First Federal Credit Union. I started over there as the controller. And um, throughout the years, a few years later, in 1990, I became president. So I've been there ever since. Wow, that's great. Are you a Massachusetts resident? I am. I, uh, live, uh, I live in Spencer, Massachusetts, and have been there my whole life. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. You know, we can go in a lot of directions here, but I want to sure. ask you, uh, uh, clear up one thing for me. Mm -hmm. You have banks. Correct. Uh, savings banks uh, and, and others, and then you have credit unions. Sure. Help, uh, help me to understand uh, the difference between the two. Well, there's some major differences. Um, I'll just, I'll, again, I could go on for hours on that, but just uh, the basic differences are um, the services are similar. Um, the amount of products and services that we offer are similar to the banks. Um, when you look at credit union banks, the major difference is that a bank is or could be owned by stockholders. Um, it's run by a governing board of directors and trustees, uh, as well as the regular senior management staff. In a credit union, you have a board of directors made up of the members who are basically the, the, the we call them members, not customers of Webster First Federal Credit Union. And so credit unions have members, not customers. We have a board of directors, not a board of directors and a, and a board of trustees. And we have the single management team, um, just like the banks do. So I think there's, a, as far as the products, I think some of the credit unions are very limited to the number of products that they can offer. The larger the credit union, um, or whether you're a federal or state credit union, which we won't get into today. But um, there, there are differences. Each credit union has its own limitations. So we cannot do everything a bank can, but we do almost everything. Is it, uh, is, is the size of a loan, for example, one of the limiting factors? Um, not for Webster. Um, we, have, um, we have limitations. Well, we don't do high risk $20 million commercial loans. We're right. there for the, for the um, individual within the community, um, the mom and pop stores, um, you know, up to two or three, four million dollars even. We've done loans up as high as four and a half million. Um, to help the people in the local community, but we don't finance these big billion dollar companies mm -hmm. or anything like that. So we're really here, the credit union movement is really here to help serve those in need within the communities that we serve, um, not the big blue chip companies. You know, that it's interesting because I've, like all of us, I watch, uh, I watch the ads. There was some news last weekend about uh, uh, some of the larger banks wanting to charge uh, for, to uh, use a credit card now, mm -hmm. fees, those sort of things. Right. And, and it appears that they're that they're uh, removed from the sort of the everyday community kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it, my sense is that uh, a credit union is not. You have you have to have a direct line into the community, don't you? Yes, and I think what you'll find is um, today. And I won't, again, I won't get into the financial part of it, other than the fact that it's very difficult to make money today in a financial institution. Whether you are a large bank, Bank of America, or you're the smallest credit union in the country, which I think is fifty thousand dollar company, um, it's very difficult to make money today when the interest rates remain so low. Mm -hmm. We run on what you call margins, and the margins are very narrow. So, um, depending on what your backroom operations and efficiencies are, or efficiencies are. Um, it's going to make a difference of what you need to charge for fee income. So what you're finding is these larger institutions who have big overhead have to find other alternate ways to right. make revenues. So they're charging it. They're trying to find every different way they can to charge additional servicing fees. Where credit unions are going the opposite way, trying to minimize fees and, and even get rid of fees. 
We've just done that recently in January of this year, have made tremendous changes in reducing all the fees for our credit union. How do you, uh, how do you stay current? I mean, you have to worry about the general state of the economy, I would assume. Right. You need, yes. to work, need to sort of have a finger and a pulse on, the, on, the, on your customers. Correct. I mean, I, I'd be okay. interested to know how you, how you stay up to date. Um, a couple of things. Uh, internally, I have got a great staff. Everybody will probably say that, but right. um, I, I feel very confident in the staff that I have. I have a senior management team. I think I have um, 17 vice presidents right now, all arranged to do their own duties. Um, they pretty much keep abreast of all the compliance and regulatory issues in their own individual department, and they feed it up to me. So I get the, 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 the bottom-up. Um, style uh, management there within um, for the internal operations and I meet with my vice presidents as, as often as I possibly can either in groups or individually so that's how I keep abreast of the internal um, network outside of the industry I'm actually on the Massachusetts Share Insurance Corporation that ensures excess deposits for credit unions I sit I remain on that board and I also just recently um, stepped down as chairman of the National Association of Federal Credit Unions in Washington really so I've been on that board for seven years now. I remain on the board for two more years, but I've been in the chairman of that organization representing credit unions around the entire country for the last two years. So I'm assuming you've had experience in Washington. Yes, I've had the uh, <laughs> opportunity to meet both the senators and the, uh, the House at this point. Any, uh, any uh, testimony over the years? I have. I've been given the opportunity to testify in both in front of the state, uh, the Senate and the House in uh, challenging times right now. Boy, they are. They're not going to get any less. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm afraid. I agree. The, uh, the, the sense of community. I want to just explore that a little more because, uh, and maybe we should start by talking about uh, where the credit union, where your credit union is located. Sure. Because that then leads into, you know, how do you deal with those the the, the varying communities? Yeah, there's a little story there too. So let me just tell you, um, when I first came to Webster back in '87. Um, we had branches, uh, it was in Dudley, Webster, and in Douglas. And after that, during the uh, mid-90s, um, we went on a, on a campaign to either grow naturally or to be able to um, look at institutions that needed our assistance and seeing if they wanted to merge with us. Um, so we merged with nine institutions during the 90s, which took us throughout Worcester County. Um, and I might miss one here, but you know, you get Douglas, Charlton, Spencer, um, Auburn, a couple in Worcester, um, Webster, uh, Whitensville, Douglas, um, and, and they, they're spread out even further than that. And we've been given the opportunity to circle um, a good part of Worcester County, but just recently, um, some of the changes that have taken place in the last year to outreach to, to, to more people within the communities, as we were able to, um, we actually merged with Saugus Federal Credit Union, Winthrop Federal Credit Union. Really? Um, Filene's Credit Union was our most recent, and right before that, Fitchburg Federal Credit Union. So we've outreached now to the Boston market, and now instead of just handling um, the community based in just Worcester County, we have branches located in Middlesex, Essex, Suffolk, including um, the closest one to you is Tremont Street in Boston. Boy, the, the, uh, I would not think that. I would, I would not think that you'd... Uh you would have, your reach would have extended into, into Boston. It was an opportunity that we were given in, 19, in 2011 um, by the National Credit Union Administration to work with other credit unions in the Boston area. And because we're so strong of a credit union across the country, um, we, have, we, we have extremely high net worth and we have a good operations going that they allowed, it, they allowed us to be able to move into the Boston market. Is, is the expansion part of your, uh, your job? Is that is that the most exciting part of what? Uh, of it's always part? exciting when you got new uh, new new opportunities. Um, whether it's expansion via uh, merger or like we just recently did here in Hockington, <coughs> where we opened up a new facility right from scratch, um, there's always opportunities. And if you just stay there and do nothing, um, you end up being nothing. So in this uh, high competitive environment, you really need to stay alive, stay active, and make sure you, especially staying ahead of the uh, technological game that's in front of us today. What's the most, <clears throat> so this expansion, while it's exciting, it might be the biggest challenge, though, no? in what you do? 
Oh, it is. I mean, you have to make sure all your numbers match up. You just don't keep expanding, expanding. You can go out of business that way, too. So you have to do it through controlled growth, and we've done a great job of that. I think we put a plan together. When I became president back in 90, we immediately started beginning um, discussions on making sure that we walk before we run. And I think that uh, our institution, and I know that there are many others in the community, um, that have done controlled growth, and they've done it well. Um, we've also seen bank failures here throughout the New England or United States um, because of uncontrolled growth. So you've got to be careful. You know, we all remember um, the smaller community banks, a lot of acquisitions, a lot of mergers. Uh, you end up with uh, a Bank of America and some other big ones. Right. Uh, my sense is that the, that the consumer is demanding smaller, I wouldn't say neighborhood, is that is that uh, I think community oriented financial institutions is probably a, the word but I think um, I think what you're finding is the and it's very common is people will come in and say you know as, as big as Webster has become or the more services that we that we offer um, we still don't forget that the member is the member and that you're not just a number you're known by name and if we can at all any time we try to remember your name when you come in so and when you come in you'll, you'll deal with certain people you'll you'll get the one-on-one -on -one contact you're not you can still do the online applications we have everything electronic that's out there you know the apps right. the web pages and all that stuff but you still have that one-on-one -on -one person that you can get to uh, people still get to me and I'm the president you know uh, how many you started with three essentially three yeah. out in Dudley right. Webster how many facilities, I think you used that word, facilities. Yeah, How we many have, facilities um, we have 17 have? locations right now, and we've just recently, we have 17 locations, and we've just recently opened up uh, a beautiful 90,000 square foot operations center in Worcester, where the hub of all this information funnels into. Mm. Lots going on there, too, as well. Yeah, there is. Worcester. Yeah, we have, um, we've, we've been able to be a little unique on uh, taking that building to our benefit, for the members' benefit. And we put a lot of our money back into finding additional services that our members can use. So just uh, real quickly, I'll tell you that um, in that company, in, in the operations center, we have our own legal division. We have our own paralegal and, and, and an attorney firm to help our closings. We've, uh, we ha we've initiated our own title company to assist in the mortgage closings so that we can do our own title searches and so on and so forth right internally. And recently we've opened up our own um, uh, insurance agency. Really? So we also do all homeowners, workers' comp, business liability, um, auto. We do all of our own insurance products as well through, uh, through various insurance companies throughout the country. And of those, uh, of those locations, you talk about members. Mm -hmm. How many? Right, right now we have about 66, I want to say 66 or 67,000 members that we, um, that we have right here in Massachusetts alone. So if I want to become a member, what, what, what steps do I go through? It's pretty simple. Um, you can do it online or you can come into any one of our branches. And basically, the, the, in order to become a member of Webster First Federal Credit Union, you have to live or work. Um, it's live, work, worship, go to school in or have a relative, immediate relative within those four counties that we mentioned earlier. Worcester, Middlesex, Essex, and Suffolk. So anybody that's in the community can become a member of Worcester. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Say, what, was the, what were the criteria? It's if you live, live, work, worship, or go to school in any of those counties. Or have a relative? Or have an immediate relative within those communities here. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. So let's, talk, let's take it down now and let's look at Hopkinton. I'm interested, uh, I'm interested in, uh, again, you've got a facility in Boston. You're out west of Worcester. Mm -hmm. uh, you're expanding. Why Hopkinton? Why Hopkinton? Um, well, there's been a few things um, that initiated, initiated the, the Hopkinton research. Um, we were just in Worcester County before, as I stated earlier. Right. And as uh, the last year and a half, we've outreached to Boston and in, 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 in Winthrop and Fitchburg, we kind of started making an, an alternate circle from central Worcester County all the way up over to Boston and back around. And what we found was our last um, opportunity to merge with the credit union was the old Filene's, the Filene's Basement oh, sure. Store. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've just recently merged with Filene's Credit Union, which was part of the Filene's Basement Store. And that's located on Tremont Street in Boston. So when we looked at our major operations center right down the street here, what are we, 10 miles away or so, 15 miles away at the most, um, right off of the Mass Pike here in Worcester, our operations center in Tremont Street Hopkinton was a very logical choice right between to try to make sure that we try to outreach to everybody that we can. 
Um, and so when we looked at the, the areas between Tremont Street and, and Worcester, uh, Hopkinton was a viable site. Um, they had, uh, I don't believe there was a credit union anywhere in Hopkinton or some, even the abutting communities do not have an actual community credit union. So we thought it was a great opportunity to bring the credit union movement to the town and to allow the people to see what they can get for bigger and better services. Now, you, you're also moving into uh, a, a new area. Mm -hmm. the, the shopping center is not the right word for right. the area that you're in. Right. In fact, our friends in town would probably be upset if I used that term. But you're in a great location. Right. I think um, we, um, we, were, we, we were in the initial discussions of that, um, of that facility that they built um, with the Price Chopper market. And um, we were given an opportunity to become the anchor store across from Price Chopper. So now when you come up into that new, uh, that new area, um, you actually almost drive into our building right there in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, we have a drive up window there and everything else. And um, it's, it's been very well accepted. Um, I believe we've got the majority of the businesses in that local community um, have wanted to join us. I know that we've been, av been able to have other um, um, individual owners of small businesses within a community have all stopped. Some of them have even come out to see me before we opened to make sure we had the services that they needed. And I do know that we've already, I think we've already lent out nearly $3 million to people within the Hopkinton community for both residential and personal use so far. And we've only been there for a couple months. Well, and, and Hopkinton Square now, I, th I think, is, is almost 100% occupied is it not I believe Pretty close. I, I believe it's almost 100% occupied except for maybe a couple spaces on the second floor yeah, maybe and, and I haven't and, checked that recently so and I think there's uh, there's active interest even whatever little space there is uh, well, there's not too many facilities like that in your area right now either I mean it's it's one of the biggest growing places in Hopkinton right now yeah and as you far have as a business and going. you have access to uh, you have access to South Street right uh, and the business is up there and there are a couple uh, a well-known. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of the a lot of our members come from up on that hill. Uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> how about um, how do you balance now? Again, you've got the eastern Boston side. You've got the right. west of Worcester. Now you have this uh, what we think is a pretty uh, admirable community in the middle. How do you balance? the community needs. There must be people after you all the time to well, support things. If you find, uh, if, you, if you go to our website, um, I'll put a plug here, but websterfirst.com, but if you go to the website, you'll be able to um, look at the rates. And what you'll find is that we've been able to narrow down the rates so that it's, we remain competitive in any marketplace throughout Massachusetts. There is a difference in competition a little bit more in Boston versus Hopkinton oh, yeah. Yeah. versus if you go out to my hometown of Spencer. Um, the rate structures are a little differently, but with interest rates being so low right now and the margins so narrow, everybody is within an eighth of a percent one way or the other. So it really comes down to service. So to remain competitive, you've got to just be able to better serve the people, and I think we do a great job at that. Um, as far as the rate structures and being um, in line with everything from Boston to, to Worcester County, you just got to just you got to have people that are just watching your competition at all times. And we do that. Well, you know what is of particular interest to me, um, knowing a little bit about the banking community in Boston <clears throat> a few years ago, there were a lot of headquartered banks here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there is a headquartered bank in Boston that I know of, particularly of any large size. No, most of them are probably in New York. I think most of them are in New York now. Where's... Um, Where's Bank of America? New York? I can't say. I don't I, know. They're, know, they're all over the place. The, but. That must be a very living, working, being born here, being mm -hmm. headquartered here has to be an advantage. Well, I think I know the communities better. Um, I think one of the, well, I'll, I'll give you the example was knowing the community. We opened one in Spencer a while back. And when we opened in Spencer, no one there knew what a credit union was. Mm -hmm. um, similar to Hopkinton, there was never a credit union in the community. And when the people in the Spencer community realized that they could literally walk in the door and have an alternate resource to do their financial uh, need to, to satisfy their financial needs, whether it's savings, checkings, loans, auto loans, or what have you, um, they, we became very well accepted and they realized that we were a major competitor in the community. And they came in and that branch today is a, is a 
large institution, I'll say it's a $65 million branch in Spencer East Brookfield area that we've been able to put out into those communities and um, it is one of the nicest and well accepted branches. So that's what we need to do is have those people come in like that here. Yeah, yeah. Now when you come into a community you have to deal with, uh, you have to deal with town uh, town officials, that sort mm -hmm. of thing, and uh, you you still, while there, you may be moving into a, a development that's permitted, you still have related kind of issues. What I'd be interested in the in the the kind of response that you've you've had from in sort of the yeah you know the the, the government side of things because we we work really hard at that a lot in this yeah. community. And uh, well, I can say, I'll say this. Um, from the very beginning, we were dealing um, with a gentleman, Chuck Joseph, who, yeah. who's been working up in the, uh, in, in the square with us. And um, he actually helped us um, get involved with the community and so that we could bring in the, the, the new financial institution. But I'll just say that we've had uh, no, no negative comments. Um, it's been really accepted with open arms from everybody. Um, I think right from the building process to the acceptance of our occupancy permit to discussions about signage, to the ability to <laughs> offer the services and in, in the drive up window is always a big issue. Yeah, um, but we, we had no kickback at all and in, in the town to work with the town was fantastic. You know, the, uh, you Fortunately, because I've had other, uh, uh, other situations in other locations, but this was fantastic. Well, you know, that's interesting because little things like signage and, and drive up windows are not insignificant. No, they're not. Uh, you know, we've, we've, this community has been pretty protective of that sort of thing and, yeah. and I think you guys have responded at least from my point of view, visually, it seems right. to it seems to have worked. Yeah. Next couple of uh, next twelve months, for right. example, you, you, I'm sure you 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 watch the economy. Uh, what are your what would be your some of your goals for uh, not just for the uh, institution, but you personally as a CEO? Um, I think what you find is that moving forward, there's a lot of regulatory issues hitting hitting the financial world. Yeah. Um, the CFPB situations that you're reading about every day, um, uh, Mr. Cordray, um, the position him, no one knows what's going to go on with the CFPB. But that, from, from that part of the government side, uh, or from that side of the government I should say, is that there's a, there's a lot of regulatory issues that need to be addressed. So over the next 12 months, or the next 24 months as a CEO, we have to really be aware of what those changes will have on our entire operations, which eventually filters down to the members. So that's my key over the next 12 months to watch that. Um, there are so many compliance and regulatory issues that are hitting us every day, it's incredible. However, um, we handle it and so don't other financial institutions. I think the next thing that comes into play other than a regulatory environment is just really keeping an eye on your internal operations and mm. making sure that you can remain competitive and you got to remain profitable. Um, you, so, so, so the bottom line is everybody has to be profitable in order to succeed. So that um, we try to narrow the interest margins, give the best rates on the loans, um, pay the highest dividends on savings and checking, and, and get rid of as many fees as possible. But there's a fine line between right. doing something wrong and doing something the right way. Yep. And I feel we do a lot of things the right way. And in terms of, in terms of your uh, next 12-month goals in, uh, in Hopkinton? In Hopkinton, um, we've done a lot of uh, pre-planning. It's again, Hopkinton's only been open for a, few, a couple months now, right before Christmas, and um, right now the community is just getting to know who we are. Um, hopefully, with the help here, um, talking to you today with some of the advertising and some of the things that we'll be donating and, to the, and committing, and the funds will be committing to some things right. within the community. We're hoping that people will realize um, who we are, and we're hoping to offer you all the best services that we possibly can in the uh, in the credit union world. Well, that, 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 that's my sense. I mean, that's yeah. sort of the, 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 the sense we get um, having been involved a little bit in, in the opening and met some of the personnel mm -hmm. on, the, on the local level. If, if you had a couple of minutes yeah. to capture what we just talked about in about 30, yeah. what would, uh, how would you fill it? How would I fill it? Um, about our credit union or sure. about the industry? Um, well, I think about... And, you know what, and about your philosophy. Well, I think our philosophy, number one, is, is, is to maintain um, a strong, positive relationship with our members. Uh, the members are first, and it's kind of a joke, you know, Webster first. We always say that uh, when you're thinking of doing your credit union uh, business or banking business, think of Webster first. 
uh, before anybody else. Because I'll say that you know our philosophy is that the member does come first, and in the credit union philosophy around the whole country is people helping people, and we follow that. And I think that's why we we've, we've gone from an eighty million dollar company back in the eighties to a six hundred and fifty million dollar company today, serving sixty six thousand members within the communities, because we put the members first. And I think that if anyone comes in to give us a try, they'll see that we actually try to do that. Well, you know. Attitude's a big thing. Yeah, it is. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I like yours. Thank uh, you. I like the focus. Uh, I like to focus on the on the community. I like the focus on the members. And uh, we're excited about having you in Hopkinton. We're excited about being uh, here. Well, it, it, and we appreciate that. Thanks. So, Webster first, another positive addition to the community. Not only do they have a sense of uh, how important it is to deal with. Uh, with the local community, but their members. Uh, it's a pretty impressive philosophy, and we're, uh, we're really pleased in Hopkinton to have Webster First with us. Thank you for listening.